Hi there, my name is Doug Willardson. I'm the town administrator here in Webster, and here with me is... I'm Jennifer Sullivan, the public health director. I want to thank Jen for joining with me. We are going to do a situational awareness update for you uh, regarding the town's response to COVID-19, as well as uh, an update on some of the recommendations from the CDC, uh, the state, and the uh, Massachusetts Department of Public Health. So we have a few slides uh, that we'll go through today, but uh, to start off, we want to make sure that we are a part of the solution, that we're not the ones uh, kind of uh, exposing people. We want to make sure that by taking proactive measures, we help to maintain uh, the slow spread of the disease and make sure that we have enough capacity at our healthcare facilities. Uh, so that begins with stopping the spread of germs. Uh, this has been talked about a lot lately, but we have a video that we wanted to share that kind of briefly goes through all that point. So we'll share that with you now. So I think that video explains a lot of what we already know and what has been talked about a lot in the news lately, that we need to you know, take good care of ourselves, use good personal hygiene, and that will help stop the spread of the germs. Uh, so we have a few slides here from the CDC website that Jen and I will review uh, on how to, again, stop the spread and make sure that you're keeping yourself and your family safe. So Jen, do you want to take care of this first one? Sure. So as you are aware, the uh, COVID-19 is spread through respiratory droplets from a cough and a sneeze and another person inhaling. So anytime you, ha you have the feeling of coughing and sneezing, you want to either do so in your elbow or in a tissue. And as soon as you're done with the tissue, you want to throw that away immediately. Definitely sanitize as much as, off as, much as possible. Um, yeah, good. Pretty much common sense, uh, regular, good hygiene. Yes. Uh, but we need to make sure that we abide by that. Uh, again, uh, we want to make sure that everyone's clean their hands. Uh, also, Jen, you mentioned about sanitizer. Yeah, so sanitize, hand sanitizer, a lot of people are buying random hand sanitizer thinking that it's protecting them. You want to make sure that the hand sanitizer contains at least 60% alcohol for it to be effective. Yep. Uh, with that, even though your hands may be clean, it is also a good practice not to be touching your face all the time. So sometimes when I'm working, I'm like this all the time. Uh, but we, uh, you should not do that. That obviously makes it a lot easier for the germs to get, germs to get inside of your body. Yes, it does. Um, also, we want to avoid close personal contact. Uh, the recommendation is six feet. That's correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. So uh, if you... Uh, should remain six feet away from anyone besides your immediate family that you live with. Um, we try to spread it apart a little bit more here, but we kind of uh, couldn't all stay in the camera and do it at the same time. <laughs> but, uh, some other things that you're probably aware of that we want to make sure that everyone does is if you are feeling sick, sick, please stay home. And Jen, if you are feeling some of the symptoms of COVID-19, say a fever, or a cough, things like that, what Def should you do? So you should definitely call your health care provider. If you feel the need to call 911, please alert them that you are having effects of the symptoms. And if you plan on going right to the emergency room, call ahead. We don't want to just show up and have everyone else in contact with you if in case you are a COVID-19 carrier. Yes, so definitely call ahead either to your doctor or to the hospital, or if you called 911. Yeah, yes. definitely let them know that you are experiencing those symptoms. Uh, Jen talked about this already, but cover your coughs and sneezes. That's how those get uh, spread most easily. And then wear a face mask if you are sick so that, you know, if you do cough or sneeze, it's not spread out all the, over the place. 
Uh, one of the other things is clean and disinfect surfaces that you touch on a regular basis. Um, here on the slide, we have some information about how you can create your own home disinfection disinfectant solution. And again, these came directly from the CDC website and will also be available on the Town of Webster website to review as well. Uh, one of the other things that a lot of people are struggling with at this time is managing their stress and anxiety, especially with this being so much out there in the news and on the media. Uh, people need to make sure that they're taking care of themselves. And Jen, what are some good ways that people can do that? So if First and foremost, you want to get your rest. You want to hydrate yourself. Um, take any protocols, obviously, of what we've already discussed. Yeah. Maybe get some good exercise in as well. Yes. Uh, and go outside. Get fresh air. Yeah. So even though you may be doing some of those things, if that is not helping you and you're still feeling that stress or anxiety, uh, you should get professional help. And one of those ways that uh, you can do that is by calling 211. Uh, this is a state system where they have a program that's called Call to Talk, uh, and you're able to go on, uh, talk to someone, hopefully that will help relieve some of your symptoms and anxiety, and you'll feel better afterwards. And just remember, there is definitely a high call volume, so if you don't want to hold, you can leave the phone call. They will keep you in the order that you called, and you will be ha uh, receive a call back. Yes. Good. So this slide is information from the president and the White House. So uh, the next 15 days is really important to this virus uh, and, our, and the community and the states and the country's response to it. So if we can uh, nip in the bud, so to speak, that will make a big difference in the long run and uh, reducing exposure now will have a, a great benefit going forward. So a lot of these things are the same that we've already talked about. So if you're feeling sick or a child's feeling sick, keep them home. Uh, but we want to be careful of uh, both the elderly and the other at-risk people, uh, those who have compromised immune systems. Uh, they should definitely be staying inside and away from other people as much as possible. Absolutely, yes. And please keep an eye on your elderly neighbors. Make sure they have what they need. Yeah. Uh, and again, this is from the White House, but uh, we should avoid social gatherings. Uh, if you're going to uh, get food, you need to do it through a drive-thru or a pickup or delivery. Uh, avoid any discretionary travel, not only vacation type travel, but also just uh, going to the store, whether you need to buy something or social visits. Please limit that to as, as little as possible. Uh, just know, in case you don't, that the local supermarket has limited hours for elderly only uh, between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. Sorry, I believe no, sorry. it's 6, 6 to 7 a.m. Yes, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, every morning, and which is a perfect time because everything already has been disinfected. And hopefully restocked. Yes. Yeah. And actually, that brings up another good point. Uh, uh, we should not be hoarding either food or paper products, things like that. Uh, there is enough product in the system. Yes. Uh, it may take a little while to get back into the stores. It will be there. It will yes. be there. Uh, and then I, I think another good thing that we need to point out is that we should not be visiting uh, nursing homes, retirement centers, long-term health areas, You'll facilities. You'll be putting them at risk, yes. Yeah. Uh, so even though you may have a loved one there, uh, you can FaceTime, call, other things. Mm -hmm. Uh, so all of this is in an, att an attempt to flatten the curve. So uh, diseases like this uh, follow a parabolic curve. So they, they start off relatively small and they grow exponentially. And then they, they'll again kind of fall exponentially as well. Yes. Um, but what we're trying to do through social distancing and making sure that we're using good hygiene is that we're uh, lowering the curve and that we're lowering it past the point where our health care system has the capacity to control it. So, uh, you know, if it spikes above that, then there's going to be people that aren't going to be able to get the care that they need at hospitals or care facilities. And we don't want to see that happen at all. Yeah. But if we can, you know, lower it, stretch it out more uh, in a longer time period, but at least the hospitals will have the capacity to take care of everyone. Yes. Uh, so uh, a local update, uh, we uh, received as of, uh, we're doing this on March 19th, but uh, the evening of March 18th, we got an update from the state that in Massachusetts, we have 256 cases, and in Worcester County, we have 10 cases. And Jen, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but 
as of now, there are no cases in the town of Webster. No cases in the town of Webster, and we are notified as soon as there there is one. Yeah, and uh, while it's great we don't have one, uh, there will be a case in the town of Webster. There, and, there will be. Uh, that's not necessarily a need to panic, but it's something we just need to continue to do what we've been instructed. Uh, good, use good hygiene, stay home, avoid distancing. Yes. Uh, yeah, avoid lots of interaction with others. Uh, so now we'll kind of switch the tides a little bit and talk about what we've been doing here in the town of Webster uh, to help uh, control the situation and address it. Jen has been very, very busy the last few well weeks and especially the last few days dealing with um, a lot of the orders that came from the state and federal government, uh, one of which is the closure of on-site food and beverage consumption. Uh, so Jen's contacted every restaurant, drinking establishment in town. Uh, and they are definitely aware, they are closed, uh, and most were, were fairly good about understanding the reasoning behind it. Um, we've also closed the self-served food counters uh, at any locations that were still open as well. Yes, we have. Uh, we have also limited the gathering in any facility, including retail establishments, to 10 people or less in any one space. Yes, uh, any so, business in town. It, yeah, any business in town. So. Uh, yep, that uh, goes for a retail facility, gyms. et cetera, gyms. Uh, there are some businesses that are remaining open and they're going to only let 10 people in at a time, et cetera. Uh, for those that are remaining open, uh, they have been ordered to disinfect high contact areas hourly. Uh, you're probably also aware that uh, the schools were all closed by order of the governor, both public and private. Uh, and as of next Monday, uh, March 23rd, both daycare facilities will be closed as well. Yes, and there will be some approved sites that will remain open for children of essential employees, health care providers, and emergency response personnel. Right. Good. So I personally want to thank Jen. She's done a, a fabulous job taking care of this and making sure that people are aware. And you know, this is a difficult thing for businesses, especially to take. And uh, you've been able to you know, handle that well and uh, work with them. And so, you know, a bad situation wasn't made worse. So thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, as you probably are also aware, the town has canceled all its uh, sponsored events and activities over the next uh, month. Uh, right now, uh, April 13th is the date we're looking at, and at that time we'll reevaluate things, see where we are. Uh, if there was an event that you had a question about, if it was still ongoing, you can feel free to contact Carol Marchand, Carol Marchand at the Recreation Office. She's the Recreation Director. The number is 508-949-3800, extension 1023. Uh, she can answer your questions for you. Uh, we have also closed uh, public buildings to the walk-in public. So we want to make sure that both the employees of the town as well as the public that has to do interaction with the town are both uh, protected. Uh, so we, uh, public's no longer allowed inside the building. However, we've taken measures to make sure that all town business can remain open and functional. Uh, so employees are available by phone, email, uh, regular mail, um, Maybe you could even FaceTime some of us. Uh, you probably don't want to do that with too many of us, but anyway. <laughs> uh, But we also want to encourage people to take advantage of our website. I believe pretty much every town service can either be initiated or completely uh, done through our website. Uh, that includes uh, permitting, paying your taxes, uh, making other payments, scheduling things. Uh, that can all be done online. I also like to point out that the although the library is closed, there are a lot of resources available through uh, both the library website and also many of the apps that are available through uh, CW Mars. Uh, for instance, my family uh, often takes advantage of uh, it's called Hoopla, where you can you know, watch videos, uh, get uh, audiobooks, uh, books to read on your tablet, etc. So a lot of the services that are available at the library are still available. You just have to get them digitally. And uh, it's also important to point out that the police station lobby is open to the public. Obviously, if you are feeling any symptoms from COVID-19, please do not uh, walk into the police station. Uh, but it is available for emergency use. 
Uh, we've talked about a lot of things that have affected small businesses, and uh, there's definitely going to be a ripple effect. And it is a concern of ours. Yeah, we, we certainly are aware and know that our small businesses are going to be struggling over uh, not only the, the few weeks where a lot of these establishments are closed, but going forward, it will take a long time for them to recover from this. Uh, so there are a few relief programs that the uh, state and federal governments have uh, offered. The first is a $10 million recovery loan program from the Commonwealth. People can apply uh, by going to www.empoweringsmallbusinesses.org. Uh, also, the state has uh, provided some cash flow relief to uh, both restaurant and hospitality businesses. So all of these sales, meals, and occupancy taxes uh, that would have been due in March, April, and May have been postponed and they will now all be due on June 20th. Uh, and last of all, the SBA this has a small business loan program uh, which offers loans up to $2 million. And those uh, can be, more information about those can be found on the SBA website. Uh, next, I want to mention that school lunches are being provided by the school department uh, for all residents 18 and under. Those are available Friday, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And it's a, a grab and go situation where you drive through, they bring out a, uh, a lunch to you and uh, give it to you while you're still in your car. Those pickup locations are at the Bartlett High School, the Webster Middle School, and Park Ave Elementary School. Um, and I think actually there is another location at the, the Village's apartment complex yes, as well. Yes, I've heard that as well. Uh, you can uh, go on the school's website and check out what the menu will be for the next day. Uh, but again, those are free and available to all residents 18 and under. Uh, one of the other things that uh, people are obviously concerned about is unemployment. With many of our businesses uh, closing their doors for a portion of time, a lot of people have been laid off. Uh, so the state has promised that they will expedite the unemployment process and have waived any waiting periods. Uh, so in order to apply for unemployment benefits, uh, you need to go to the website and it's mass.gov and topic slash unemployment. So just uh, go to mass.gov and you can put it in the search bar and you'll be able to find it. Uh, the federal government is also working on a relief program. Uh, the details of it are still kind of being worked out between Congress and uh, the White House, but uh, in the next few days, they'll probably have an announcement of uh, what will be available to individuals to assist. Uh, so, uh, we hope you have found this helpful. What we want to do is uh, provide this kind of information ongoing. All the information we cover today is already on the town website, and uh, it is always being updated as new information becomes available. So uh, there are a couple different areas. There is the uh, health department's web page, which has information specific about COVID-19 uh, and uh, a lot of the links that we've talked about from the CDC, the State Department of Public Health are available there. Uh, but also on the town's main page, we have a newsflash, which is uh, the very top of it, which is a coronavirus update. Uh, so all the information that uh, we talked about here is on there, and that is updated if there anything new were to come up or any, uh, any developments. Uh, we will also uh, be doing updates like this in the future. Uh, so uh, we look forward to your comments and your feedback. Uh, and if you do have any specific questions, feel free to contact Jen. Uh, her email is available here, and she, you can reach her by calling the main phone number line and then extension 4002. Uh, so Jen, we kind of covered a lot in a few minutes. Is there anything you'd like to add uh, to the public as they... So forward. just be aware of your surroundings, and we're doing this to protect everyone, um, not just yourself, but the people around you. Um, just follow all the protocols, and we can do as, uh, as much as we can at this point with doing so. Great. And I'll echo that. Please do your best to follow the stated guidelines, uh, social distancing, uh, personal hygiene, et cetera. Uh, and we'll be able to, as a community, as a state, and as a nation, move forward and uh, uh, reduce the amount of effect that this virus will have on our society. Uh, so thank you. We appreciate your time. And again, feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you.